Hi there. Let's talk about something else very important to the basics of chemistry. Energy levels, also called energy shells, energy sublevels, also called energy subshells, orbitals, and electron configurations. I've split these topics into two parts, covered in this video and a second video, and I have the time breakouts of each topic in the description box below, so that if you prefer to narrow in on a specific area because of what you've already grasped on this topic, you're certainly free to do so. I also hope that you've taken a look at the subject basics video on the periodic table, as it goes hand in hand with the information shared here. Now very quickly, in earlier videos, we learned that electrons which have a negative charge, are located in shells or energy levels that surround the nucleus of the atom. And we also learned that each energy level represents the three-dimensional space surrounding the nucleus of an atom. We also know that the nucleus contains positively charged protons, and we also learned that neutrons, which, well, are neutral, have no charge and are also located in that nucleus with the proton. We know of course that these we know of course that these neutrons serve to add to the mass or weight of the atom. Now given that positive and negative charges are attracted to one another, the positive charge from the protons attract the surrounding electrons in the various energy levels of an atom, keeping the atom intact. However, an electron can be pulled away from a given atom with the right amount of energy, and the farther away a surrounding shell is from the nucleus of a given atom, the electrons in that outermost shell can be pulled away or shared due to another atom's nucleus seeking to pull in more electrons to add to its own outermost shell. The sharing or donating of electrons results in a chemical bond. So you may be wondering, why the sharing or donating of electrons occurs in the first place? Well, atoms seek to be stable, and stability for an atom with an atomic number of 20 or less, and remember that atomic number is typically displayed right above the element symbol in the elements box on the periodic table. So continuing, stability for an atom with an atomic number of 20 or less typically comes in ensuring its outermost shell is full with eight valence electrons. This is called the octet rule. Exceptions to this octet rule include the elements hydrogen and helium that follow the duet rule. These two elements are considered full with two valence electrons. A neutral hydrogen atom has one electron and seeks one additional valence electron to become stable with two and helium exists with two valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are electrons in the outermost shell. The noble gases are the only elements that exist with a full shell of eight valence electrons. Of course, with the exception of helium that exists with two valence electrons. The fact that these noble gases exist with a full shell of eight valence electrons is the reason that they are the least reactive of all the elements on the periodic table. There are some other exceptions that occur generally on the periodic table when it comes to valence electrons, but that shouldn't be the focus right now. Understanding the energy levels, the energy sublevels, orbitals, and electron configurations are the focus right now. Now the shells or energy levels will typically be represented by the letter N and the number 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The first energy level, N1, energy level 1, is closest to the nucleus. The second energy level is a little farther away from the nucleus than the first, and the third energy level is a little farther away than the second and so on. There are times where you may see a diagram of energy levels displayed that use a letter designation 
instead of the alphanumeric designation N1, N2, N3, N4, etc. This alternative way of displaying energy level designations typically involves the letters K, L, M, N, etc. to note the various energy levels with K representing energy level 1, L representing energy level 2, M representing energy level 3, and so on. Now it's important to know in the electrons of a given atom start filling the energy level closest to the nucleus, moving to outer energy levels depending on the number of electrons that the atom has. Each energy level or shell contains different sublevels or subshells, which are a division of a specific energy level or shell. Subshells are labeled S, P, D, and F and can accommodate or hold a different number of electrons before additional electrons begin to fill higher energy levels. Energy level one contains subshell S. Subshell S can hold a maximum of two electrons. Energy level two contains subshell S that can hold two electrons and subshell P that can hold a maximum of six electrons meaning energy level two can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Energy level three contains subshell S that can hold two electrons, subshell P that can hold six electrons, and subshell D that can hold a maximum of 10 electrons, which means that energy level three can hold a maximum of 18 electrons. Energy level four contains subshell S, subshell P, subshell D, and subshell F. Now subshell F can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. So adding subshell F's 14 electron to the total of 18 electrons that S, P, and D hold together in total, we see that energy level four can accommodate a maximum of 32 electrons.